Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Mulner here. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather Winter 2023-24 Outlook. This is where I lay out for you what I think is likely to happen along with the biggest factors. The biggest factor this winter season will be the strengthening El Nino. I think we'll go from a high-end moderate to strong, low-end strong pretty quickly here the first half of the winter. And then the second half of the winter likely to taper off back to moderate. And I'll show you those El Nino models momentarily. The last winter we saw that was El Nino related was winter 2018-2019, although it was so weak, it's almost non-comparable to this winter season. The last strong El Nino we saw, in fact it was the strongest in the last two decades so far this century, was the 2015-2016 season where it was so strong that it broke records and many areas saw warmth that carried from Christmas and beyond and some areas saw record low snowfall deficits across much of the nation. So I don't think we're going to see quite that bad and we're not going to see that strong of an El Nino. That's that's a that's a rarity. So 2009-2010 winter was more moderate of El Nino. It's probably more comparable to this winter, although we'll rival it by a little bit. Sea surface temperature anomalies along the U.S. East Coast are still running high. Could that lead into some blockbuster coastal storms? Let's get into it. Taking a look at our El Nino modeling here, you can see what's going on. Essentially, we have a borderline... We're going into a strong El Nino here. So it's a possibility that we could come close or at 2 degrees Celsius by about the time December and early January comes. That's That would put us into a low-end uh, strong category. And then heading on into later January, February, and into March, that's where we come back down uh, closer to 1.5 Celsius and then closer to 1.25 as we get towards the end of the winter. And here we go for the Eastern Pacific. You can see the massive warm sea surface temperatures increasing as our El Nino strengthens. Look at this. Some parts of the Eastern Pacific are as much as 3 to 4 degrees Celsius above average. So far, our pattern this winter, very much an El Nino pattern. The Pineapple Express, some tropical jet blasting into California, Mountain Snow Valley rain, well above average here. Uh, this snowy conditions translates into the Four Corners. Great skiing here for Colorado in the Four Corners region, all the way to the Southern Plains, even Northern Texas getting it on the act. The Northern Southern states, yeah, we could actually see uh, more snow than you're used to all the way up into the Northeast parts of the Mid-Atlantic. I think the Appalachians will be the jackpot this winter. Uh, this Arctic jet stream across the West is going to keep things warmer and less snowier here. doesn't mean no snow. It just means warmer conditions and less chances of snow. So I still think you could see at least a couple events here, just not what you're used to. And these frigid outbreaks here across Eastern Canada, pieces of the energy, the polar vortex will be allowed to break off. And if the timing is just right with some of these low pressures that head up the East coast, could throw some moisture into these frigid outbreaks to produce some of the couple good snowstorms, I think, at least here into parts of the Northeast and the East Coast and Appalachians. Here across the Eastern Great Lakes, I think you'll see a slightly above average lake effect snow, unfortunately here, slightly below average here into the Western Great Lakes. So the map you've been waiting for, snowfall, departure from average here. So essentially this light blue zone, Eastern Canada, all the way to California here, the Southern Plains, parts of the Deep South, this is where you're going to be about 10%, so above average. So I think the Eastern Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Cleveland, Erie, Buffalo, Syracuse, these areas, I think you'll eke out a good 10% above your average here. And then across parts of the Southern Plains here, Four Corners region, all the way down to the Southwest here, mountains of California with that subtropical Pineapple Express heading in. Parts of the Deep South as well here, you could see a snowstorm or two bring some interesting snowfall here. Uh, to parts of the deep south. So, 20% above your average here into the dark blue. That includes parts of California mountains here, the Four Corners region, even parts of the southern part of Colorado. Skiing could be really good here as well as the southern plains. Look at this. Parts of Texas all the way into parts of the deep south here. We get into the Appalachians. And quite curiously, all the way up here into parts of Southern and Eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, parts of Long Island, and Southern New England. This is quite a far cry from what we were looking at last winter where we saw extreme deficits. And some of you didn't even see any measurable snowfall, which was unbelievably strange. But this winter looks to be a bit different. Eastern Canada, all the way up to the Canadian Maritimes, up towards a 20%. 
Did want to mention here across much of eastern Ontario and Quebec as well, 10%. So not too shabby here for snowfall. Eastern Great Lakes, a little bit above average for your lake effect events once these storms pass as well. Now, the bad news here. 10% below average here in the parts of the Midwest. That's a given with your El Nino typical pattern here. Now the jackpot. 30% chance, I should say 30% above your average snowfall likely here across much of the Appalachians. So that includes the Appalachians of uh, Northeast Georgia here, Eastern Tennessee, uh, Western North Carolina, Western Virginia, and parts of West, Eastern West Virginia and Western Maryland. So this could be definitely be your year. It's looking like the everything's lining up perfectly for you. Now for the bad news out west here, we showed you the parts of the Midwest here, 10%. Also 10% across much of Oregon, all the way over to Wyoming, the Northern Plains here. Now the orange area, Seattle, north of Portland here, 20% of below your average here. The storm track just does not favor, neither does the moisture. And then here into the red zone, into interior Washington, northern Idaho, uh, western Montana into western Canada, 30% below your normal snowfall. You're probably going to be wondering, where is winter? That's kind of what you were saying back east here uh, last winter. And one thing to mention here with El Nino, it opens up the possibility of the subtropical branch with extreme amount of moisture that heads from California with the Pineapple Express all the way across the southern part of North America. This increases the chance that moisture from these storms gets to some of this cold air. Now, we're not seeing massive frigid air outbreaks. That's not what this El Nino pattern is about, but it increases the chance that we could see snow, especially in areas we didn't see it at all last winter. So this winter, we have a better chance of getting a few, at least a few good snowstorms here, especially across the east where you saw almost nothing last winter. And I want to say, yeah, 20% above your average is not snowmageddon by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a complete turnaround from last winter. So here we go for our temperature analysis. This is a rather interesting map because it it almost looks like contrary to what you would think, warmer to the north and colder here across the south. Well, let's get into it here. With stormier conditions with that subtropical uh, jet stream branch, you're going to get cooler conditions. And of course, sometimes on the northern parts of these low pressure systems, you can get these storms that help manufacture their own cold air with heavier precipitation. And that's what, what we're seeing here across parts of the deep south this winter, uh, as much as three degrees Fahrenheit below your, your average uh, highs here and that's also out west here that's also going to support the snowfall and wintry precipitation on the northern edge of these systems especially these ones across the gulf of mexico as well you know if you can bring down some of this colder air now look at here over eastern canada i think you stand a chance to see at least a couple degrees fahrenheit below your average here that's definitely significant because that will allow maybe potentially some arctic air intrusions at times into the northeast it does balance out into the northeast though i think you will see at about at average uh temperatures here now you can see a little bit below average here the parts of the ohio valley along the uh, Maryland Pennsylvania border here and then up towards Cape Cod. So that's with some you know heavier precipitation events. So uh, more clouds, less sun. you get the idea here a little bit below average. So it's the southeast that's really below average here parts of the southern plains as well. That'll feed into some of those snowstorms here across you know where the uh, northern tier of the country, the Pacific Northwest, the northern plains and into parts of the western and central Great Lakes. I think this is where you'll see, you know, the warmest conditions average wise above average. So it, with that uh, jet stream, that Arctic branch of the jet stream really high to the north here, this should allow things to really warm here, especially across the northern Rockies and the Pacific Northwest. So precipitation amounts here, your average for precipitation. This takes into effect snow, sleet, freezing rain, and rain. So liquid and frozen. You can see the Pineapple Express is going to keep this area in the southwest above 20% above your average. That's a given with 
this kind of subtropical jet. It's not going to be the most strongest El Nino, so I don't think we're going to see 30 or 40 percent. Some areas could. But for the most part, we average it out over this whole area. It's about 20%. So as we get into parts of Texas there, eastern Texas, all the way up into the mid-Atlantic, parts of southern New southeastern New England, southern New England, this is a good chance, a 20% chance as well. The northern fringe here, this is all 10%, you know, so averaging it out, you know, many of those areas will also see above average snowfall totals. So that makes sense. So here it is, the big area. The area we're going to see the most storminess. I think this is the chance, you know, the northern fringe of this, some of this could be frozen. Um, and then most of this across the southern part of Georgia, Florida, and South Carolina, southern South Carolina. That is all heavy rain and thunderstorms, severe weather. So that's something to really keep an eye on. Florida, Florida, you do need the rain. So this is good news that we're going to go into that kind of pattern. Now look at on the northern fringe here, even into the northeast, 10% above your average, 20% here across the big cities of the northeast. So that is pretty significant. So if we can get some colder air, that will fall in the form of snow. But you also see equally amount of rain events. So yeah, it is kind of depressing. You'll see a snowstorm, then a rainstorm, a snowstorm, a rainstorm. You know, you get the idea with El Nino comes a lot of moisture, but it doesn't always fall as snow and it doesn't always fall as rain either. It's all about timing and where that cold air positioning. And as I said, some of these storms could actually manufacture some of their own cold air. So the Southeast up the East coast, this is very wet or as I said before, frozen in some of these storms. Now, across the northern tier of the country, here it is, the Pacific Northwest, the northern plains into the western and central Great Lakes. You can see this is where we're going to see about an average of 10% below uh, total percent. This is not snowfall, although many of these areas across the northern plains, parts of the Midwest, and then back across the Pacific Northwest here in northern Rockies, you will see less snow. Not necessarily here into parts of the eastern Great Lakes, but your total precipitation will be a little bit lower than average. Your snowfall will be a little bit above average. So it doesn't always work out, you know, on the scales, but here we go. This is what we're looking at overall for our precipitation pattern. And one thing I think that's really going to help feed into some of these East Coast snowstorms is look at, we have some areas, pockets of extremely warm water. Now they've been stirred up a bit by, you know, recent storms, tropical systems that have moved uh, just north of the Caribbean up towards Southeast Canada. But nevertheless, we have, if you average out those sea surface temperatures there, you're looking at a lot of warm water and that should begin to fill in once again, because you see out here in the MDR of the Atlantic, that's going to help distribute some. And now look at this. This is kind of curious here across the Gulf of Mexico. Things have been cooling down a little bit as of late, but uh, still running a bit above average. So I think these sea surface temperatures will help to feed, you know, some coastal systems here along the U.S. East Coast. And here's a quick word from my affiliate. Check out these awesome maps. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning digital professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather Winter 2023-24 Outlook. Join me for the rest of this winter by hitting that subscribe button, bell notification button, so you're alerted when I come out with any one of my winter weather updates this winter season. I will be updating you throughout the winter as I fine-tune my winter outlook as well as we go through the months as this impending El Nino becomes much stronger. 
Also, don't forget to smash that like button. It really does help things, people. And don't forget, question or comment to keep our weather conversation going. Visit me on social media, Facebook at Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern, also at Media Mark, and also Hurricane Northeastern for hurricane season. It's Twitter at Weather Eastern. Thanks for joining me, everyone.